preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us through another week. We thank you for your holy Sabbath day of rest. We thank you for allowing us to be in your courts to worship and praise you in spirit and in truth. We ask that as we lift your name on high, that you may accept our praises. Help us to sing to your name's honor and glory in Jesus' name.
us all bow our heads as we go through the, to the throne of grace at this point in time. Loving God and Heavenly Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. O oh, Father, great is your name and greatly to be praised. We pray that you may cleanse us from all unrighteousness and create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. Thank you for your holy Sabbath day. O oh, Father, we pray that you may be with us. We pray that you may be the messenger and the messages and those who are ministering to you, O oh, Father, in songs and in health and in other aspects, O oh, Father. We pray that you may be with those who are in the pews, O oh, Father, help that we may uh, have a closer walk with you, O oh, Father. Help that we may examine our lives so at the end of the day that we may have a close walk and that we may tell someone about Christ. Oh, Father, please build us through your Holy Spirit. We know that the evil one does not like your presence, so we pray that you may be with us, oh, Father. Banish all evil and we pray that you may be with us. Thank you for your goodness, your love, and your mercies towards us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Amen. Amen. I feel what you feel. I feel what you feel. I'm sure. I can tell you what you feel. She ended too soon. Come on. Huh? Isn't that how you feel? You were waiting for her to keep going. Come on, little. Yes. And it's like, don't, don't stop yet. Don't stop yet. I, I, I feel what you feel. Let's pray. Father, as we get into the word tonight, we pray for a fresh anointing. Open our eyes, open our hearts. And there are individuals in this room who need to make a decision for you. All of us, ye, need to make a decision for you. But some need to do it. and Make a commitment to live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our message tonight is entitled, Watch Your Words. What's the message? Watch your words. Could you put it up there for us, please? Watch your words. Now, they say a pitya speaks a thousand words. Not so? Now, you could see some scolding is going on there. Watch, watch mommy's face. Huh? Watch mommy's face. And watch the young man. Watch him. Pressure. Young man. <laughs> watch your words. Know your place. Know your place. Words are very, very powerful. Words. Rudyard Kipling said, words are, of course, the most powerful drug used by mankind. Words. Another writer says, N. S. Russell, Nan S. Russell. Words create impressions, images, expectations. They build psychological connections. Would you put it up? They influence how we think. You're moving too fast. Words affect how we think. Words. Most times, a man will really break through with a woman with words. It's words. Lyrics. Come on. Lyrics, man. And there are some men specialize in lyrics. Some ladies, there are some men you don't want to hear them talk to you. Because you get weak. They get weak. Words are powerful. Some men don't have no lyrics, but some have. Yeah. Some, when you put it in songs, it even become more powerful. When you listen to, listen to Boyz II Men and, and, and Luther Vandross and all these kind of people, when you listen to them, it's, it's words, you know. Just put music to it and it, it, when the, the music gets to your subconscious and the words getting to your to your, to your conscious mind. Words. Um, this guy, this guy, um, Donald Trump. Donald Trump has America upside down. His lyrics, you know. Words. Stop the steal. Hello? Make America great again. Stop the steal. They stole me the election. They robbed the this and... You have people down by the, the capital after that, mashing up the place, you know. Words not easy. Words not easy. Am I talking the truth? Yeah, words. Words invoke compassion. Words, when people talk, they can make you feel compassionate. Words can make people fearful. Words can make you guilty. You ever watch a Western? Anybody? Western, two men stand up. You know, Billy the Kid or Wyatt Earp or somebody. A real, real bad man, you know. Doc Holiday and, and another man come in and he want to draw him, you know. 
uh, Clint Eastwood, you know, Dirty Harry. All these bad men in these western. And when you see a guy come up, he want to shoot. He want to draw. And the, the bad man just stand up and drop a line on him. When he finished talk to him, the fella trembling, you know, pastor. Trembling. Words powerful. Words express love and words could exploit love. Some people drop words on you and they exploit you after. Come on, you, I, I remember in, um, in um, long ago, I, they don't show it anymore, Sesame Street. There was a smart man in Sesame Street. He used to go around selling stuff. You all remember Sesame Street? And he meet Ernie. Ernie and Bert. <laughs> and he has a bottle in his hand. And he tells Ernie, you want to buy some air? Anybody remember that? You want to buy some air? And he tell him with this air, it's a bottle, you know, nothing in it. You could blow up a balloon. You could blow a harmonica. With this air, you could lyrics and hear Ernie, what? I want the air. How much you want? A nickel. Give him the money. When Ernie go to grab the bottle, he say, I'm not selling the bottle, I'm selling the air. You all remember that, people? Come on, you all, you, this, this, your children should be watching Sesame Street, man. And then he tell him, Pastor, he tell him, open your hand for the air. And oh, Ernie opened his hand and he poured, he poured out. He said, look some, he said, look some spilling over there. You know? Lyrics. Have Ernie head spinning. Words. Words create confidence. Words could declare defeat. I saw, I saw a, um, the, the, the team singing here a while ago. I saw the team singing. And, and a little lady, a little lady was here. And while they were singing, you, you were watching? While they were singing, one of them started to tear up. The little one in the red there. Yeah, it, it, hello, it happened up here. Everybody see? Pastor, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, all of we see you. So she was tearing up. And that means she was, she was having an emotional meltdown. Okay? Something about that song, sweetheart, something about that song started to get to her. Not so? The words of the song. And then she turned and her friend took her and started to talk to her. And they went outside and somewhere between here and there, they had a conversation. I didn't see it, but I can tell you. They would have had a conversation and tell her, it's okay, you know, and, and boost up and they come back up and she come up here and sing like an angel after that. Not so, people. Words build up. Words are dangerous. Words hurt when people ridicule people. Tell them stuff. When you tell children, you will amount to nothing. Words. Words destroy. Words manipulate. Words express desire, belief, influence right, and encourage people for wrong. Words. Some years ago, I got in some trouble. A friend of mine, lyrics. Lyrics. When I was living in Santa Cruz, about 16 years old, 16 to 18. I don't know, I was 16 then. I used to drum, African drums, you know? I was the lead drummer in the group, and we used to leave Santa Cruz and go to Barataria to drum. And there was a man by the name of Mr. Plowden. He had a whole Hillman Hunter, an a, 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 a automatic Hillman Hunter. And he used to pick us up. I want to tell you about words. I stay in here for a little bit. Talk about words. And he used to pick us up in Santa Cruz and carry us to Barataria to drum and carry us back to Santa Cruz. But he had a, he had a Hillman Hunter was an automatic. Very easy. And he would leave the key in the car. So one night while we practicing, we had a little break. We outside hanging out. And a friend of mine by the name of Wayne, who was my best friend in my teenage years, he, t he told me, let me go and drive. Let me take a tush. You know that word? Take a little tush. It's easy to drive. You don't see me watching him. 
you know, automatic is just go and stop. Not so. You mash gas and you mash brakes. Telling me, let's go and drive. I'm talking about words. No, we ain't, we're not going. We say, let me go. Oh, easy. You know what, Chin Plowden, are we doing it? You just turn and mash and go forward and go back and whatever. Well, then he started to tell me, you coward eh? You know when you start to hit a man that below the belt, right? You're chicken or what? Let me go. You could drive. He telling me I could drive, eh? You could drive it, man. And, and he come in to make sure everything all right. I, I, I will sit down in the back seat. He in the back seat. 16 years old. Laid low. Set, set up. We're going in the car. We're going in the car. You know when you're driving... R is for reverse, D is for drive, all of that. But we don't keep, we don't know. So he said, we start the car, the man inside, start, boom. There's the gas, boom, boom. Yeah? I see. He said, we didn't get, I put it in R. <laughs> I, I feel R mean right. <laughs> right. When you put it in R, it's in the right gear, you know? Deeming dangerous, you know, everything wrong, Pastor. We're watching in front, and the wheel was a little turn, you know. The wheel a little turn this way to the to the to the critical, but and and the and the car in our officer, it in right, and I mash the gas, and the car gone back, gone over the drain, bam, and when I look back, when gone. Gone! And I in the car there by myself. I gone outside. Little me, Pia Pia, we call it. You know, I had no muscle. Like fighting to lift up a car. Mr. Wayne, gone! The old man came outside and watched me. Hear him now. These miserable children. They had to come and bump the car out. If you see me with my head down, a shame. Yeah. What, what caused it? Words. Told me I'm coward. Coward, but words could cause you to do right. Words could cause you to do wrong. I want to let somebody know that this world is in the predicament it is in. This world is in the mess it is in because of words. Words, people. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3. From verse 1, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said, what did he do? He said, he didn't work magic, he didn't twist her arm, he didn't do anything, he didn't lock her neck. What did he do? Just talk. Said unto the woman, yea, did God say, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. He started a conversation. Our world got into a mess with a conversation. The woman said, it's a conversation. He said, unless you were raped, unless you were raped, young lady, if you get engaged in sex, it starts with a conversation. Before you drink alcohol, it starts with what people? Conversation. Before you smoke a cigarette, it's a conversation. Somebody going to talk in your hearing. The woman said, we may eat of all the trees of the garden, but this fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said. So everything in this first scene is about conversation. Serpent said, the woman said, the woman saying, God said. Everything in the beginning is about words. God said, don't touch it. Don't eat or you will die. Serpent said, <laughs> you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes will be open and you will be like God's knowing good and evil. And the Bible says, and the woman saw 
the devil talked to that woman until she started to see things that didn't exist. Are you with me? The devil spin words. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, God said, if you eat, you will die. When the devil was finished talking, the, the thing looking like banquet food. The Bible says she saw she, a mirage, everything changed. She used to pass by the tree and the tree was, that is death. Don't eat, don't touch. But when he finished talk, the woman seeing things different. The tree good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes. Desire to make one wise. In that fruit, she saw everything. Words. And after she ate, she gave unto her husband. And he did eat. God said, the day you eat, you will die. Well, God was tr speaking truth because the Bible says, all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. God's word is true. God's word was, if you eat, you will die. The devil's word, if you eat, you will not die. Is Adam alive? <laughs> so we know God's word is true. God's word is true. The message tonight is watch your words. Not only God's word against the devil's word, but your word. Watch your words. Listen to what the Bible says in Mark, Matthew chapter 12. I say unto you, Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account in the day of judgment. For by your words, you'll be justified. And by your words, you'll be condemned. Watch your words. You can't be thinking about salvation. You can't be thinking about living right. And you're saying all kind of stuff. Watch what you hear and watch what you say. Uh, are you with me? Yeah. I, I, I'll just put, watch what you, watch what you allow to get inside your, your head, your, your ears. And oftentimes I would let people know, you, you cannot want to serve God, you can't be a Christian, want to serve God, but garbage going inside here. And if you're watching a movie, one obscene language is too much. You have Christians watching movies and somebody cursing and they say, it only have a little bit of obscene. What's wrong with you? Garbage in, garbage out. Well, you're quiet, boy. You're quiet. Watch where you're allowed to go in your head. Because the more you go in, the less sensitive you are to it. Watch your words. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 12, I want, tonight is watch what you say. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses. This is, Miriam is Moses' big sister. Aaron is Moses' elder brother. Huh? Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses. Let me just put it in context. The first elder and the church clock. Get together and bad talk in the pastor. Well, you watch all your mouth with the pastor. Watch it. Because God set up something. Watch. When the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and the Lord said unto Aaron and to me, All you come. Three, all you come. Hear, hear the Lord now. I hear all your bad talking, Moses. Come. You talk all day. Come in the tabernacle. And three of them came. I'm going to skip. The Bible said God gave them a lecture. And verse 9 says, The anger of the Lord was kindled against them. And he departed. The cloud departed from off the tabernacle. So the cloud that was over the tabernacle, Shekinah glory gone. Cloud gone. The Lord said, I will deal with all you. But I'm talking to the pastor. 
<laughs> Only quiet, boy. The cloud departed. And Miriam became leprous. Miriam protected Moses as a child. Miriam sang with the children of Israel when they came over the Red Sea. Miriam was the prophetess. And the, the Miriam was bad talking Moses. The Lord made her leprous. Learn your lesson. Go in your corner. And the Bible said the Lord told Moses, shut her out for a week. Watch your words. Now I've been here for two weeks and this young man is my son. You could tell here, that's my father. But he's your pastor. So you notice I ain't saying nothing. I ain't, uh, since I'm here, intentional. I'm not coming here and make all you feel. Pastor and pastor man, I know them is tight. So he know thing and pastor ain't tell me nothing. Are you with me? But tonight I will tell all you, that's the man of God. Watch your mouth. God will judge you for bad talking the pastor. You don't have to do him anything, you know. You don't have to run him off the road. You don't have to do anything. Just talk. Go home after lunch tomorrow. Or after church, you're going for lunch. And you have, you have rice, peas, and pasta. See, because a lot of Adventists, we don't eat meat. But we eat people. We don't eat, well, we're not eating unclean at all. No pork, no shark, no, no, no lizard, no maniku, no lap, none of that unclean, no. And we're gone on the other side. Man, we, we, we vegetarians, we're not eating chicken, we're not eating beef, we're not eating fish, all of that. But here what we're eating, people. Vegetarian cannibals. Officer, you find out, don't lock me up here. Eh? I'm preaching all right. Yeah, bad talk people. Yeah, bad talk people. Yeah, I, I am sure if you are, in, you are an inspector, right? If the commission of police find out it have some officers slandering him, man, they job in trouble. You, you talk it by yourself in the toilet. But you and other officers sit down blazing the commissioner. That's insubordination. You don't have to like him, but you're going to respect the office. Am I, am I talking the truth? You think the prime minister could find out another minister to where they're meeting and bad talking him? We know they're going to bad talk, but don't let him find out. Miriam became what people? Leprosy. Go and cool off for a week. Am I seeing Pastor Diablo in the back there? Pastor, stand up, man. Another one of my sons. Two sons in the back there. Stand up. And Pastor Palmer. Yeah, he came in yesterday. All you put your hands together and welcome them. All you leave them boys alone, you know? They don't need my son. They're God's servants. And God is beat hard. Amen? Leave them. When, when, imagine, imagine Saul running David down. Hot on David's trail. And they set up Saul. Saul in the cave. And they told David, Saul in the cave. They went, he took Saul's spear out of the cave and got away. And called to Saul. He said, my king, look. Who is this man who protecting you? Look, I have your spear. They told David, kill Saul. He said, me? Touch not the Lord's anointed. Do his prophets no harm. Careful people. Words have, words have power. Watch your words. Watch what you say about people. Miriam got in trouble. Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. I'm just showing you text with words. I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou, fool. The word, the word fool here is, is, is moros in the Greek. Where we get the word moron from? Dotish. 
you're good for nothing. That kind of stuff. God said if you tell somebody that, he will judge you. Because every person is God's property. You can't watch a human and call the human better you didn't born. They got parents telling their children that. Better you didn't born. Better you did, your, your, your mothers, fathers telling their children. Better you did dead. Watch your mouth, people. Am I talking to somebody out there? Yeah, watch yourself. The Lord said if you call people a fool or good for nothing, you're in danger of hellfire. You're watching God's creation and calling it animal. We're going down. Words are significant. You have to watch your words. They, they're important. They have consequence. They can get you in trouble. But we need words. Because preaching the gospel is by words. Words have power. And Paul knew that. Let me show you something. The Bible said Paul knew. Paul said, as much as is in me, I am ready to preach. I'm going to preach the gospel wherever I go. And I want to come to Rome to preach. Because Paul knew that when people hear the gospel, something has happened. I stood up here for two weeks just talking. Huh? That's words. I ain't tell nobody if they come in here, they'll get a car. If you come in here, I will anoint you and you'll get a house. Then nobody. I came here for two weeks and all you hearing is what, people? But you know, from those words, people making decisions for Christ. Jesus just preached. And they said, never man speak like this man. Words have power. And Paul knew that. So here Paul, here Paul. I am ready to preach the gospel to you in Rome. I am not ashamed of talking about Jesus. I am not afraid of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. When people hear the gospel, something does happen. Faith cometh by Hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. Words have power. And when people preach the gospel, the gospel does something to them. Yeah. If you don't want anything to happen to you, run from the gospel. But you can't sit down in this house and something to happen to you. Yeah, Paul, I want to preach the gospel. And Paul used to shake down the place preaching. And Paul met a man one day. The Bible says in Acts 24 and verse 1. After five days, Ananias the high priest descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullius who informed the governor against Paul. They, they, they arrested Paul and they were trying him and they brought some big lawyers to deal with him. So they brought an orator Named Tertullius. To tie up Paul. But Paul was a man of God. Paul was well learned and full of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says after they brought all the evidence against Paul that they didn't have. They told Paul to speak. You don't ever ask a child of God to talk. That's right, that's right. Hello. We have in church tonight you know. Sabbath has begun. They don't ever tell a child of God to open his mouth. If you want to get in trouble, let a child of God talk. If you, they, let me back up. The Bible says they took Paul and Silas and they beat them. Acts chapter 16. You know that story, right? They beat them and they put them in prison and they put them in chains. The mistake they make is they didn't cover their mouth. Because the Bible says at midnight, at midnight, they tie the hand and they tie the feet. But when you want to keep a child of God down, you have to cover the mouth. Because when the praises go up, blessings come down. The Bible says at midnight, chains, hand and feet, Paul and Silas prayed. And start to praise God. 
And when they started to praise God, the chain on the hands started to dance. The foot, the ground started to shake. Because when prayers go up, everything started to happen. The Bible said, let the earth praise the Lord. You, you, you need to cover a child of God's mouth. Cover them out. So when they told Paul, speak. And yet you hear? Officer? They say Paul talk. They bring all this stuff. And then they told Paul, speak for yourself. And I could imagine all heaven and Paul saying, all you, all you know what all you say. Don't, don't do that. Don't let him talk. Verse 25. Read it. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix Schimber. Listen, the prisoner talking and the judge trembling. Felix trembled. And Felix says, Go your way for this time. Stop that preaching. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop preaching now. Go. Close the sermon. Go, go now. Go. When, when I'm ready, I'll call you back. When I have a convenient time. When I'm ready, when I could take that, I'll call you back. Go. End it now. That's when the preacher preaching a sermon and you're listening and coming home and you say, no, good. Service end. I want to go. Like last, last um, when it was Wednesday, when I was talking about the, 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 the food thing, was Wednesday or Tuesday? It's talking about the food thing. You know? And you weren't here. I was telling them, and it you weren't here, so I was telling them, I have, I have a family, right? My siblings. But they belong to, they go to other faiths, right? I'm the only Adventist. But we have this family chat. And they will chat and say, well, Christmas coming, we'll have family dinner and all of that. You know, everything cool, everything cool. I don't talk religion with my family. Right? Because once you start to talk religion and belief, you end up in an argument. So I love my siblings, right? So we don't talk religion. But one day, my young sister joke me. She harassed me. I don't talk religion. They go into all the church. You could, you could, once you pray, you could eat anything. The Bible say every preacher of God is good. Once you bless it and sanctify it, you could eat. You understand? You know them lyrics, right? So I, I don't get in the way. When I go, Christmas, they say, they have the pork here and they have the crab in the callaloo here. You know? That's not, I ain't eating that, you know? So they know what I just eat and what I do eat. So that's enough preaching for them. But my, my young sister, she, her, she irritated me. She put in the chat, was coming to Christmas, people were selling dog. Dog meat, you know, wild meat. But they had dog selling and they, you know, calling it wild meat, you know. And then these, some people selling um, rats and thing telling people is and horse meat for corn beef and all this kind of stuff, right? So, so my little sister, my younger sister, she's over 50, she go and put in the chat, these people are so nasty. They're selling people dog. I, I said, you get me vex. You, you, you get me vex. So I went in the chat and said, what wrong with dog? Huh? Hello? What wrong with dog? When nobody ain't answer me up to today. So I'm telling them, listen. The Bible says, don't eat pork. Don't eat pig. The Bible said, don't eat maniku. The Bible says that. The Bible says, don't eat crab. Right? The same Bible says, don't eat dog. You don't want, you, you, you're making a big set of fuss about, they're selling dog. 
They're selling rat. You understand? So hear me now. What wrong with the rat? What wrong with the dog? If you eat any pig, eat the dog. If, if you, you understand? If you eat any crab, eat the, eat the rat. I say you're picking and choosing which dirty animal you want to eat. Don't say they nasty, giving people dog. Cook your dog, bake your dog, barbecue your dog, and eat your dog. Because if you can eat pig, eat dog. If you can eat crab, eat kobo. You want to choose which garbage you're eating. So here you know. I don't eat out of the, that garbage heap out there. I eat out of the church garbage. Garbage, garbage is garbage. They joke me. When Felix, when, 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 you understand what I'm saying, Annette? Come on. Come on. You can't, you can't have a, hear what you're doing, hear what you're saying now. I prefer to eat this, this, this dirty animal, not this one. But don't tell me dog is good. If you eat them pig, don't say, dog is good to eat. Eat the dog. And you know what? You know, people are stupid, you know. But you have so much dog running. Why are you paying all that money for pork? Free dog. Free dog all about. You don't see pig all about the place. Pig is expensive. Dirty animal. So I tell him, my sister, and I say, Oh, you're stupid. Well, you're paying all that money for pork and that dog all over the place. <laughs> Come on. You're buying money, cool. Big money. You're paying for crab. But look how much snail in the drain. Look, snail. Snail, shrimps, same thing. You eating lobster. Man, a cockroach flying all over your house. Man, cook some cockroach now, man. People, people strange. You don't say so? All you understand where I'm going? You're just confusing yourself on it. They're confusing yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Let them play stupid. Christmas coming, we're having dinner. Kind of big dog foot for them. Yeah, Christmas coming, Pastor. You go see a big ham, so I go carry a dog leg and put it there. I got, I, got, I, got, I got a real big dog boy. Eat that. Eat that. The devil is making you stupid, you know. The devil is making people stupid. Real stupid. You eating lobster. But you ain't eat cockroach. <laughs> Eating pig. A pig is a scavenger. A pig is a scavenger. If you eating pig, pig is the walking one, the kobo is the flying one. Yeah. Baba, cook up a nice big kobo. Turn it, barbecue it. Oil him down and boss bite in his skin. <laughs> and it behave yourself. See, the gospel, the gospel is make you, make you think. Felix, Felix tremble, man. Felix tremble. And Felix told Paul, stop preaching. Pastor Manzano, stop preaching now. I want to eat my pork for Christmas. Stop preaching, Pastor Manzano. That's enough for now. New international version. Listen to what it says. That's enough for now. You may go. When I find a convenient time, I'll send for you. When I, hello, God sent a message to a man. What's the message for tonight, people? Watch. God sent a message to this man by his servant. And listen to the man. When I find it convenient, when I find it convenient, I will do what God says. But it's not convenient. So go back and tell God I say what people? Tell God I say what? Wait. 
Felix told Paul, I'm not ready to serve God. Tell God, I say, wait. I'm not ready. Hello? That's the, a man sending a message to the prophet of God. Tell God, serving you not convenient for me. When, when I, I find it convenient, I will accept the truth. When I find it convenient, I will serve God. When I find it convenient, I will stop committing sin. When I ready, you in church tonight? When I am good and ready, I will decide to live right. But right now it's inconvenient for me. So tell God, wait. When it's convenient to me, I'll baptize. When it's convenient to me, COVID finish. COVID over. Church open. Go back to church. Mm -mm. When I find it convenient, I'll come back St. George. When I find it convenient, I'll come back to church. I ain't ready yet. I ain't ready yet. When I find it convenient, when I am good and ready, when it suits me, tell God, I say, cool it. Tell God, I say, not now, I'm not ready. I have other more important things to do. Tell God, what is he hurrying me up so far? Are you in church, people? Tell God what happened. Me already yet. Don't rush me. Tell God don't push me. Tell God don't get me vexed, you know. Tell God I ain't ready yet. Imagine. A, a man telling God. Cool it. You're you telling God you're inconveniencing me. Hello? If God, God should say, well, stop breathing. This, God should tell you the, the, um, the lungs, press pause. And you're there. Oh, I can't read. I can't read. God say, when it's convenient to me, I'll get some air. Put you in a little George Floyd, you know? Cool out. Oh, I can't read. God should say that. God real merciful, you know why? God real merciful. A man telling God, you're in my way. Stop that sin. Stop that adultery. Stop that common law. Stop that. It's killing you. And you telling God, me ready yet. I'll sin a little more. You think sweet? Stop doing that. You telling God, I ain't ready. Give your heart to God. I ain't ready yet. It's a good thing. I ain't not God. Good thing I ain't not God. I tell your heart, stop. Just stop beating for a little bit. Just no air for a little bit. And when you cry out and you say, God, I want air. I ain't ready yet. You chill out. It's inconvenient. I have other things to do. You know, you know what's interesting with people? They tell God, wait. They will come in these meetings and you tell them about salvation, pastor, and you call them, give your heart to Jesus. I ain't ready yet. But here what's going on. If they apply for a visa, they apply for a visa or their family in the States and they apply for residence. And the embassy told you 8 o'clock Monday morning to show up. You know you ain't telling the embassy, wait. It doesn't matter what you had to do. It, listen, if you were getting married and the embassy tell you that they come, you put off your marriage. Because you want green card. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. You could always put off the wedding till tomorrow. But you don't want Uncle Sam green card get away. You ain't telling them, wait. Huh? If you're tracking, fellas, you're tracking. Hello. Tracking the thing. 
The young girl eh, singing up here. You're, you're like she when you're beating that drum, you're real beating when she up here. You understand? You're ponging hard. You understand? Sing, baby, sing. You understand? And, and you know, you're, you're, you're trying her thing, you're trying, and she hired a hole, you know, and she told you, listen, yes, you know, you say, um, let me go out Saturday night now, and she say, okay, this Saturday free. You saying wait? No, nah, you ain't saying wait. They had drum practice, I can't come. Hello, you hearing me? Choir practice, I can't come. You have a date, you're going. I seen people laughing on in the back there, you know. You don't have a job and they call you for a job interview. Monday morning, 8 o'clock. You're there 6. You're not telling them. Wait. It coming home? Yeah. See, we know we could tell God, wait, but we, other people? No. You buy a ticket. Hypothetically, I'm not encouraging you. But you, you win the sweepstake in Grenada Lotto. You win a million dollars. And they're paying it Monday morning. Come and bring your ticket. Wait. Huh? You telling them that? No. You're going is money. Money. People are easy, you know. Or they build a house. I saw some big houses on the coming up here, these orange houses, these apartment places, you know. And they told you, come and get your keys. If it's, well, Trinidad is HDC, Housing Development, the government giving out a house. And they tell you your name, call, come for your key. You have that here? Yeah, come for your key Monday morning. For your key for your brand new house. You ain't telling them, wait. But when God says salvation, Wait. Wait. Let me read something for you. Luke chapter 12, verse 16. And Jesus spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? I have no room to bestow my fruits. He said, This I will do. Big plans. I'll pull down my bands and build greater bands. And I'll put all my fruits and my goods. And I, I will say to my soul, Big plan, soul. You have much goods laid up for many years. You could retire. Take your ease. Eat. Drink. Be merry. He wasn't studying God. And the Bible said the same night. God said, fool. This night. Your soul shall be required of you. Tonight, you're going dead. Yes, I have a doctoral degree. I'm supposed to say you shall die. I don't care about that. Eh? I'm, a, I'm a, a black man in Grenada from Trinidad. Tonight you go dead. Dead like a knit. All your big plans gone. Somebody else will drive your car. Somebody else will live in your bed. Somebody else will have all what you have. All your big plans. Telling God, wait. God said, tonight you're dead. Tonight. Tonight. You know who will wait? Everybody will wait on you. They'll wait on you and drop you down in a hole. God said, tonight, you're a fool. The biggest fool in the world is the person God call a fool. You don't tell God, wait. Listen to this. Listen to this. You could tell God, wait. You know, but you can't tell death, wait. Huh? Life telling you, come. You say, wait. When death calling you, tell it. You, you stop death. Try it. When your ball call, like the red ball, you're gone. You could tell God, wait, but can't tell death, wait. Listen to this. Another of the disciples said, Lord, Jesus called him. He said, Lord, I want to go and bury my father. Jesus is so radical. Hear what Jesus said. Follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Jesus said, let me tell you, your father dead already. He's telling the man, your father is dead. You know that. I am calling you to follow me. Life is calling you. 
Nothing you could do to bring back your father. They're going to bury him whether you come to the funeral or not. I am calling you. Let the dead bury the dead. That's how radical Jesus is. What Jesus is saying, when I call you, nothing should cause you to tell me, wait. That's God's response to your wait. Put it off. They're going to send you pictures. And right now, they're filming. You're going to see it on YouTube. You don't have to go to the funeral. Let them bad talk you and say what they want. After five days, they're going to forget. Wait. Listen to the Bible. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. God calling you and you say, wait. How shall we escape? How shall we escape if we... The word is what, people? Neglect. There's a difference between neglect and reject. Reject means no. Neglect means put off. Come on. You have something to do. Procrastination. You're not doing it. That is neglect. What's the word neglect? What it mean? Neglect means to ignore. Neglect means to disregard. Neglect is to overlook. It's not that it's not important. You know it's important. But you're not paying attention. Neglect is to forget, to slight. Not to pay attention to. So there are a lot of people on it. They plan to serve God. They plan to do it. They, 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 they're willing to do it. But not now. Are you with me church? They, pl- they have good plans. But they're telling God. Next month. Next year. I will serve you for the new years. Wait. They plan. They plan to go to heaven. But then, making a decision. It's like a fella and a girl caught in. You know, there are some people, the fella and the girl caught in one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years. They engage seven years, eight years. Yeah, look, when you're going to get married, we're planning. Any man dating you five years, six years and planning, he have a different plan. I hope nobody ain't doing that here, you know, because in trouble. Come on, man. If you're really, you're really wrapped up about somebody, you're only excited to, to be with them. You tell me you're dating five years? I have six months I ready. Pastor, go and talk to me somebody in the back there. Six months. I ready to marry? If I dating you two years and you, you, you ain't ready, you ain't ready. I gone. Come on, somebody, talk to me. Come on, ladies. Two years, three years, four years, five years, six years. What's what going on with you? What do you think? I, I land, land could wait. They want to serve God and they plan to do it. They're just caught in Jesus. But they ain't getting married at all. When you're courting somebody and you get married, you're torturing them. Yes. Yes. I want to get married. I want to go on honeymoon. Yes. Yes. Waiting married is Bible study. <laughs> better to marry than to burn. Come on, people. It's better to marry than to burn. So I'm married and you. We come to church. We sit down. We, you know, holding hand. No. I want married. You want me to tell you about my wife how we get married? We used to, we used to go party and drink carnival, you know, before we were Adventists. And I drop her home. The fellas always have it hard. You go on Grenville and drop them, then you had to come all the way to St. George's by yourself, you know. <laughs> fellas just really have it hard, boy. And you know how much time I drop my wife home and no money, you know. I had to ask her for money to take her to go back home. Sometimes we broken, but we in love. Carry them out, we broken. So I drop her home. You know? Yeah, we want Adventists, we want Christians, so we go in party, carnival, and all kind of stuff. I drop her home, she inside. Make sure she gone inside the house, you know? And the back door, she opened the back door. She inside and I outside there. You know? I had to go. She had to go to work in the morning. 
Okay, baby, good night. Uh, excuse me, um, before you go, you, you have any money? <laughs> I broke, I had no money. Otherwise, I had to walk from here to, to, to quite on Grand Hans, you know. So, uh, she gave me a little change, and I'm going up the road. When I go up the road, no car out there. She's sleeping. I outside there in the night. <laughs> Pressure, the fellas just have it hard, boy. And Pastor and I are going out the road. I'm going out the road. I can't get no car. I walk from here to way over to the, you know, from Bartery to San Juan. Long walk. When I reach in Santa, I have to get a car to go to Santa Cruz now. Them time is one car working. And them time, a fellow used to work, he had a Zephyr. Old car. The Zephyr, the steering was off. He had to spin like 14 times to get the car to turn. You know? So that's the only man working. And now he just stand up in San, San Juan. Come from a party. She home sleeping. I stand up, take a drink and all kind of thing. I stand up. Two o'clock in the morning. Two. Yeah, man, boy, what wrong with you? What are you doing outside this Saturday night? The next night I go on here, yeah, man. I want to get married. <laughs> I want to get married. I can't take on all day in the dark, every night. You know. Yes, I was in love. I got married because I was in love. But more than love, I couldn't take the taxi thing, boy. I get married because pressure for taxi. So I told her, I said, when we go home, both of us going home together. Amen. Yeah. You can't be caught in Jesus. Caught in Jesus and Jesus proposing over and over and you telling him, wait, wait, wait. You're insulting him. If somebody call you and ask you to do something and you say, wait. You know what that means? I'm not able to do it now. But when God calls you and you say, wait, you're telling God you're inconveniencing me. See, because when God says, come, God will make sure everything in place for you to come. So to tell God, wait, is a technical no. When you tell God, wait, you're technically telling God, no. And tonight, God pleading with people. Come and be saved. And hear what we're saying? No. Because wait is equal to what? No. no. I'm here to tell somebody, watch your words. Watch your words. Let me read for you. Two texts and we finish. Amos chapter 8. Behold, the day comes, says the Lord. I will send a famine in the land, not for bread, not for water, but for my words. And they shall wander from sea to sea, from north to the east. They shall run to and fro, one to hear the word of the God, Lord, and they shall not hear it. That's why you don't tell God, wait. And then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer them. They shall seek me early, but shall not find me. We're done. I'm done. You know that phrase? I'm done. I'm done. Watch your words. You will run to and fro. See, one of these days, when we tell God, wait, 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 one day God will say, you wait. You wait. Your turn to wait. I was calling you all the time, all the time. Come. You don't have time for me. One of these days, God will say, I don't have time for you. And don't believe God wouldn't do that. God called the Jewish nation. Called the Jewish nation. They went to Babylon. They came back. And God was there working with them. Jesus came talking to them. They wouldn't hear. And the Bible says Jesus stood up one day. And the mountain... And he looked on Jerusalem and said, Softer, please. Softer, please. He, he, he looked at over Jerusalem and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often have I been calling you? But you wouldn't come. And then what he said? 
Behold, your house is left unto you. He said, um, it's over. It's over. Don't feel that God has so much patience that he will run us down, run us down, run us down, run us down until we say, I'm ready. Mm -mm. You answer God when God calls. Because you don't know when the call will not come. So tonight we're going to call again. The Bible says, when Paul preached, Felix trembled. The man saw judgment. But you know what is interesting later in the text? The Bible says, Felix kept Paul in jail. Two years he's in jail. Two years. And just because he wanted to make the Jews happy, he left him in prison. The same man who trembled. Trembled. Eventually turned around and leave Paul in prison. See, when you, when, you, when you turn your ears off God, your heart gets harder and harder. Anything we do, when we now start, we're very sensitive. Anything. Anything. When you now start to a, a young boy now started to drink, he, he, he hiding in a corner. You now started to smoke. If it's marijuana, you're going in the back of the bush. You don't want police here. And after a while, you're walking down the street smoking weed, you know. Anything you do, after a while, you get bold. You get bold. Young boys go by girl and they're sleeping over. Sleeping over. And getting up early and dust before parents. Next thing you know, they're getting up and sleeping and and the parents see them and they come in and drinking tea with them, you know. Anything you do, after a while your heart gets hard and you get bold in the sin. That's why the Lord says, come now. Come now. Not wait. Come when people? That's God's answer for wait. Watch your mouth. When God calls, you have to say, here I am. What would you have me to do? We have been called to follow Christ. We are to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you Worship Him in all the nations, in all the